Welcome to Sports Management Podcast, where you will hear interesting sports management professionals share their stories, experiences, and passion for the sports management industry. I am your host, Marcus Philipsson. Today's guest is Tanya Moreno, the Senior Vice President of Marketing at the NHL team Arizona Coyotes. They recently made a rebrand and business transformation, which included, among other things, a change of logo to the Kachina. Moreover, she is also the first female senior vice president of marketing in the Coyotes franchise's history. Prior to her role at Arizona Coyotes, she has held roles as senior marketing manager at CBS Sports, as well as managerial positions at Burger King, PetSmart and Mattel. Now, in her current role, she is also deeply focused in expanding the Coyotes' diversity and inclusivity initiatives to support underserved communities in the Phoenix area. Get ready to learn how working with Barbie can help your career in sports, how Arizona Coyotes helps grow women's hockey, and what will happen now when the team does not have a signed stadium for next season. Tanya Moreno, welcome to Sports Management Podcast. Thank you so much, Marcus. I'm excited um, to chat with you today. I'm excited to talk to you too. So uh, you are the uh, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Arizona Coyotes, the NHL hockey team. So first of all, what does that role include? Um, Yeah, it it includes a lot of different verticals, which is really fascinating. You know, I'm in charge of leading the strategy and planning for digital content and channel management of that, whether that's sales marketing, social media, and Phoenix self-identifies as Latino. So that's why multicultural marketing is important to us here locally. Um, It also entails event marketing um, and planning, support around our Arizona Coyotes Foundation and CR efforts. I'm in charge of branding as well. And then I guess the biggest one is just helping to grow our fan base with a focus on youth hockey programs. That's very interesting. And the branding part is something you have worked very hard on lately since the franchise has gone through a rebrand and business transformation, which included the introduction of the Kachina logo. So can you talk a little bit about this and what triggered these changes? Yeah, I mean, I could start by saying that the reason that branding and really helping to drive brand awareness is important for us is that I realized early on when taking this position that we had a brand awareness issue. So many people have no idea that Arizona has a hockey team, a professional hockey team. And so I knew um, pretty early on that we needed to focus on our brand and brand awareness. In terms of bringing back the Kachina logo, we brought that back because it's a fan favorite from the 90s. And looking at our comments on our social channels and getting fan mail, it was really requested by the fan. So it was our way to give back to them. It was rated the best sports logo in the Valley. We really love the history behind its creation as well as the look. So anything from the colors, it's definitely modern and it has those clean, sharp edges. It almost feels like this logo was created before its time. And we really think that it resonates with adults, but I'm actually more excited to see that younger generation and how they react to it. As obviously, you know, your brand and your logo transfers over to merch Um, and things like that. So really excited for this new journey. Me too. I can't wait to see where it's going. You mentioned that the fans had a big impact on the choice of logo. So were you actively asking for their feedback or were they contacting you? We started seeing comments about like bring back the Kachina and different pieces like that. Um, Last year, the league actually released reverse retro jerseys that use the Kachina and that had overwhelmingly positive comments. And so it really sparked something for us to say, hey, the fans are asking for this back. We've already seen really positive results from the reverse retro jerseys. What if we just make this our primary mark moving forward? That sounds great. With regards to the business transformation, I know that President Gutierrez has made some changes and you haven't been too long in your position. So what other changes have been done and what is the aim going forward? 
Um, I think a big part of our business transformation has been a new focus on the youth programs, as well as our foundation and community relation initiatives. So it's really interesting when you think about trying to market to parents, for example, to, to get their kids really, you know, into the sport or into having a family experience where they can create memories that last a lifetime. It's actually more efficient and effective if you win the hearts of kids and their interest, and then they'll nag their parents or their family and friends to come to a game or to buy merch and things like that. So we have a renowned focus on the youth initiatives, not just because we want them to equate to a ticket sale, but because we really believe that starting with kids and helping them build, you know, their heroes and, and things like that are really important. Um, we're supporting a lot of the girls hockey initiatives as well. We know that's super important to help grow the game and give people the exposure to a sport and an organization that maybe they wouldn't have had another chance to do so. And lastly, I think really just focusing on our community and listening and asking questions. You know, COVID hit a lot of small businesses here really, really hard and different communities. So being able to reach out to them to say, hey, how we're here to help. What does help look like for you? Is it volunteer hours? Is it donations? Is it monetary? Is it simply just help using our platform to help promote your business so that we can help get you some exposure? It's different for each company. And so it's really, really important for us above and beyond the, I guess, your traditional sports teams that try and sell, you know, jerseys and tickets to games. I'm really glad to hear that. And uh, in a previous episode, I spoke to Mary Kay Messier from uh, Bauer Hockey, and uh, they also have some uh, great initiatives for just growing the game, get more people involved, make it accessible to everyone and growing the women's game. And I'm uh, super excited to hear that you also uh, have taken this approach. Yeah, she's fantastic. I was on a, another panel for Gender Equality Month with her, and she's phenomenal. I'm so excited for what Bauer is doing for the game. Me too. And now we are in October, which is hockey month. Hockey is back. So with the year and 18 months actually that's been with COVID and everything, how do you now go into this uh, hockey season? Well, last season was madness. Like I, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It was madness, right? So I was in a brand new role. I was the third team member in the marketing department. The reason for that was, you know, furloughs and just different reasons with COVID and things like that. We had a brand new team, new ownership group, a new CEO, and then of course, COVID, right? So we didn't know if we were going to have a season. We didn't know if we were going to be allowed to have fans. And while I do think that every single season will bring its own challenges, I really hope that no entertainment vertical, sports vertical business has to go through what we went through. <laughs> Obviously, it's not completely over, but um, it was it was a lot of new and a lot of uncertain in one season. Um, what does it look like for this season? I'm honestly really excited with our new rebrand. We have like a new brand anthem coming out here in about a week, which will tie to um, the Kachina and, and mostly the representation of what fans look like around Arizona. So definitely looking forward to that. We're able to bring theme nights and promotion nights back. So giveaways, some of the like entertaining and fun elements that we weren't able to execute last season because of precautions and COVID that, you know, we're still definitely putting safety first, but we're able to bring some of those fun elements back. So I'll give you an example. Last season, Howler, our mascot, could not be anywhere near fans. He could be at the games, but he had to be in his own suite. And it was really sad watching kids like really want to take their pictures with him, but he just could not. He wasn't able, due to guidelines and protocols from the league, to be able to do that. So I'm looking forward to all the kids and honestly, even the, the adults like light up when they see our mascot. So lots of exciting things this season. Definitely. If we talk a little bit about you and your career, 
you are actually the first female to be the head of marketing at Arizona Coyotes. So first of all, what does that mean to you? And second of all, what do you think it means for women in sports in general? Yeah, I mean, I'm honestly grateful for the opportunity. I believe that every human being brings their life and career experiences into the roles that they have. So I'm really excited to bring mine into this role. I think, and this is just from feedback in general, um, we're thinking about families more than ever, our multicultural population here in Arizona more than ever, really trying to highlight the diverse fan base that we have and figure out how to better connect with our female fan base. Is that because of my background? I think it's partially because of it. Yes, I was born in Colombia, South America. I claim Miami as my home, but I am an immigrant. I moved to the U.S. when I was six, um, super family oriented. I worked at Mattel for seven years. So studying you know, parents and kid behaviors and things like that, I think, have really helped elevate the way that I approach this role. What I hope it means for girls now and in the future is I hope they don't look at an industry that might be dominated by a set group of people and think I don't belong or I can't do this. And I hope that they feel empowered to to try it out and really just not let it limit their expectations or their ability to try to get into a particular industry. And for the men involved as well, I think it's a tremendous opportunity to just approach business problems and have just diverse thinking and be able to solve it, whether it's quicker or more efficiently, more effectively. I'm a big believer that diversity makes the work better because everyone approaches the work differently. For sure. And uh, I read a quote somewhere that uh, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but you said that uh, diverse backgrounds and experiences, you can actually solve problems in a bigger, better way. So that speaks a little bit to what you said. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've encountered it so many times where you have, let's say, um, I'll just make up an example, but like you have three people that have very similar backgrounds, age, demographics, household incomes, and they may approach the problem one way. And then if you have people with completely different backgrounds, you may start to think about the problem differently. So I'll give you an example. One of the first things that I brought up was, wow, our tickets seem to be really expensive. We're talking about being family friendly. And we've integrated, you could get four tickets for X price, but it's still expensive. Like families want to create memories and have wonderful experiences, but that's also multiple people that they have to pay for. Could we come up with some sort of family package where they actually get to pick the number of people that they want to bring to a game? Not all families are two, three, or four. Some families are eight. Some families are honestly just one. So we we put a Pepsi family pack together where you get a food and beverage credit, you get a discount on merch, and then a discount on your ticket. And you can add however many tickets you want. It's not limited to odd or even numbers. You could add 10 if you want, or you could have three if you want. That's great. And we talked about the women's hockey and initiatives for growth before. So what is Arizona Coyotes doing to grow the women's game? We're trying our best to elevate it as much as possible. We have a director of women's hockey here named Lindsay Fry. She's an Olympic silver medalist, and she's been doing a phenomenal job along with her team to help build out those programs. So we have a program called Little Latins that is actually a subsidized program for girls to be able to get into hockey and try it out without having to have the barriers of it's too expensive and I can't afford it or things like that. We have a program called Small Fries. We have all kinds of free to play clinics just to try to introduce girls to hockey. And then we even have a a very elite competitive program called the Kachinas for more advanced players. They travel around the nation competing and they're actually top in the league, which is really, really exciting. Um, So I think we're just trying to fund the programs appropriately, promote the programs appropriately 
to staff them and really just try and build that out. Amazing. And uh, also a great way to connect it to the brand there with a Kachina name again. Yeah. And honestly, the way that I see it is, while I would love these girls to end up falling in love with hockey and, you know, wanting to come to a game. Personally, it's important to give kids of all genders and backgrounds the opportunity to play a sport and at that hockey. I mean, because of what it teaches you, the teamwork aspect, pushing yourself to overcome challenges, building really good and healthy habits that will stay with them for their entire life. So for some reason, they choose after a year or so to not participate. We were still part of helping them develop as humans. And I think that's honestly priceless. This episode is sponsored by InSport Education, the online business school for sport. They offer a range of different courses, for example, Foundations of Sport Business, Private Equity in Sport, and much, much more. As a listener to this podcast, you get 10% off all of their courses using the code SPORTSMANAGEMENTPODCAST10. Click the link in the description below and sign up today. Bouncing back again to your career quickly, you have uh, worked in marketing uh, both uh, in sports and outside of sports. You have been uh, at uh, CBS Sports, but also at Burger King and PetSmart. So uh, now when you're back in sports, first of all, how is it to be back working in sports? And second of all, what experiences and uh, knowledge have you taken from, for example, Burger King and PetSmart that you now have interpreted into uh, your work at the Arizona Coyotes? It feels really great to be back. It's pretty incredible being part of an industry that helps create memories for families and kids, friend groups. It's also amazing being part of an organization that truly wants to make Phoenix and Arizona a better place for so many different groups. So it's not just the sports and competition aspect, but what uh, we stand for as an organization, whether that's assisting nonprofits, if it's donating money, time, promoting their businesses. It's really been a challenging year, like I mentioned, but one of the most satisfying years I've had in my career. It's fascinating that you ask me that because when I was about to take this role, I realized that it was a role that had all my previous experience rolled into one. So at Burger King, I really learned a ton about branding, national advertising, and multicultural marketing. At PetSmart, I learned a lot about the e-com and merch side of things. When I was at Mattel, I worked for both Barbie and Hot Wheels. Barbie was about rebranding and really connecting with influencers and doing a bunch of collabs, whereas Hot Wheels was more with a learning experience in the digital front. How do you take a physical toy and turn it digital because the times were changing and kids were spending more time on their iPads and their phones at a younger age? So really learning the value of you know creating apps and games and the engagement side of your brand that isn't necessarily tied to a physical product. And so I'm responsible for all of those verticals and more in this role. So I feel like sometimes you don't quite understand where your career is leading you and why, especially since mine has been so diverse, like from the QSR industry to consumer goods, to media, to like it, I didn't quite understand where it was leading me. And now I truly understand the value of my experience and how I'm bringing that into this role. That's super interesting. And I mean, working with Barbie and working for a professional hockey team, if you take a step back and look at that, that's so different industries. But as you say, when you look closer, there are elements of the work that you learn from Barbie that you can bring into the world of hockey. And now you can interpret all of this in your your new role. I think that's fascinating. Yeah, thank you. After this season for the Arizona Coyotes, your agreement with the stadium will expire, if I'm correct. So what will happen uh, after this season? Honestly, Marcus, I don't know. Um, I know that our owner, our president and CEO are all working really hard to find us a new home here in Arizona. Um, But we haven't nailed down a new arena yet or where we will be. 
um, what we can say is we're definitely committed to staying here in Arizona. So I know we have a couple of pretty good options where they just haven't made a decision. What's really great is um, the commissioner of the NHL is fully aware and said he will do anything and everything to ensure that we stay and that we have a home for next season. So there is no scenario where the Arizona Coyotes don't play. That's good to hear. Is it any possibilities to transfer to a different city? Um, I think the possibilities are definitely there. I can ensure you that none of us want that to be the scenario and we are committed to staying here, especially since there are options. Um, 99.9% sure we will stay here in Arizona and, and honestly, maybe even in the city of Phoenix. That sounds good. Another question that I usually ask the guests here is with regards to leadership, since it's the sports management podcast. And I mean, you are heading up the marketing team for Arizona Coyotes. So how would you describe your leadership style? Um, My team is 14 people strong now, considering less than a year ago, I was the third person in marketing. So I'm really, really proud of the team um, that we have all built together. My leadership style is very much, I believe that the team needs to be highly aligned on the objectives, goals, and KPIs. And then after that, I don't micromanage. I let you know the multicultural marketing manager manage and come up with plans that she thinks are best for what meets our objectives and our KPIs. So I do think that in sports, more so than any of the other categories that I've worked in, it is very easy to, to kind of play the squirrel game, right? There's always something every day that pops up that you could be doing more of or better of or go down a different vertical. So just making sure that the team truly understands what our priorities are and what our focuses are is important. I also really believe in culture. My team is very young. And while culture is important, Having a good, strong culture is important for any age group. My team is really young and, you know, I try and be flexible on work from home days. The majority of my team works really late. Games happen on nights and weekends. So making sure that they have the time off to spend with their families, with their friends, um, to prioritize their health and their happiness um, outside of work for sure. And I am also a really big believer that I don't have all the answers and I'm a fairly, I wouldn't say new leader, but new in this industry. So I love pulling other people in that have more experience to talk to us when we have issues or just to learn from. So yesterday I pulled in Shane Doan, um, who's a former player here of the Coyotes. He is beloved in this organization and through the entire league. And I had him talk to my team about, hey, listen, you were a captain for a really long time. You guys won a lot of games, but you lost a lot of games. How do you stay positive in time of frustration or the unknown? What do you prioritize every day in order to be successful? So I believe that I don't have all the answers and trying to bring other people in that have experience in areas that I may not is important too, to help them grow. For sure. And now I get curious, what was his uh, advice? His advice was that it's not about you that it's never going to be about you and that humans don't get satisfaction by being selfish in the moment when you're under tremendous pressure. And let's say other teammates aren't performing well, it's easy to be like, it's not my job, or I can't believe I have all this stuff to do. But in the end, it's not about you. And when you help somebody else, it actually alleviates your stress level and your endorphins go up and you're you're a happier human If you approach it as when you do get frustration and you do have challenges, it's not thinking about how annoying this is for you and the workload that this requires from you, but rather I can help someone else by doing this part and it'll make us stronger. And um, if there truly is, let's say, a weak link, just going to them and asking questions versus accusing of like, you're not pulling your weight, but rather saying like, 
hey, I, you know, I noticed that you're struggling a bit, or you're getting really frustrated. Is there something I can do to help you? So when you disarm people and you don't make it about yourself, something just really changes in your brain. It's, it's you know, that's why mindfulness is such a hot topic and has been for a while is changing your mindset versus or changing your mindset and then realizing it helps solve the problem. Yeah. We have actually had the sports psychologists on this podcast who talked a lot about mindset. You realize how important it is. Absolutely. I think it's important to learn from mistakes, but it's almost more important to then move forward and not dwell on, you know, the workload or what could have been. It's learn from, you know, definitely recap and learn and then implement the next time, but just keep looking upward and onward. Definitely. Something else that we talk about a lot is networking and uh, its importance. So how do you network? Um, that's a great question. I think in this role, I'm mostly interested these days in networking with other sports marketing leaders to understand you know, what some of their challenges are and how they approach specific things. So I've been networking a lot with the with our competitors actually here. So the head of marketing for the Cardinals and the Suns and and the Diamondbacks. And I think for me, I take networking as I want to learn from other people. And I guess if I have any advice for people looking to get into sports and to network, it would be to be an active participant. So watch the games of the sport that you want to get into, you know, follow the team's social accounts or the league's social accounts, reading sports business journals and listening to podcasts like these are so important to better understand the area of interest. And then I think if you have the chance to help in any way, do it and then connect with people that have the role that you're interested in. So I'll give you an example. If you're a graphic designer and you want to get into sports, pick the team that you love, maybe create some pieces and then send them over um, when you're reaching out to someone in the front office. That way it's not like, hey, I'm interested in sports. Do you have some time to talk? Well, I do think that's important. You spark attention from other people and you stand out amongst the competition, if you're like, hey, this is my craft, this is what I put together, are you open to talking through this? That's usually how people stick out to me. I've had people redesign our jerseys. I've had people interested in joining our social team that have created TikToks. It's just really the feeling that someone on the other side gets is they're talented and they care. I think that's great advice. Approaching the end here, we have talked a lot about obviously hockey and sports and marketing and also diversity and inclusion. Is there something that I haven't asked you that you feel is important to bring up? Um I would say that there, you know, for the people that are looking to get into sports, there's no such thing as a normal day working for the team for working for a team or working for a league. I think the only constant is that we have usually back-to-back meetings and our calendars are always filled with meetings because it's such a collaborative industry, but it's not something that you have one specific skill set and that's all you'll be doing for you know the, the rest of your time at that organization. It is filled with all kinds of different aspects um, and it's really, really exciting. And then I guess the second piece is that, you know, sports automatically have a platform that people listen to. And for me, it's really exciting, you know, years ago to see athletes really stand up for what they believed was right or for issues that they really wanted to surface. And it's been really exciting to see certain teams, you know, take lead and also do the same as well as the leagues. But you have a fantastic opportunity because people automatically listen to what you have to say. So it's tremendous pressure for me because I want to be able to stand for, for the right things and, you know, be able to use our voice for good and to make change. But on the flip end, it's, it's that added pressure that you do have that platform and you do have 
thousands of people listening and watching your every move, but it is an incredible opportunity to be able to affect that many people simply by working for a professional organization. Definitely. Uh, Very well put. Before we sign off here, the last question that I always ask, if, if you could choose the next guest on this podcast, who do you think that I should talk to? Um, I think it would be, I mean, obviously you're not solely, you're not focused on hockey or fo- focused on sports, but I think the senior vice president at the Seattle Kraken, which is the brand new hockey team in the NHL, would be fascinating to understand you know, how did you build a brand from the ground up? I know the Vegas Knights did that a couple years ago. And, you know, there's been plenty of teams that are that are new, but it's fascinating in a market that has such strong teams already built in like the Seahawks and the Mariners. um, It'd be fascinating just to get the ins and outs of how you start a brand from the ground up. Definitely. Very good tips. Tanya Moreno, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the Sports Management Podcast and good luck with the NHL season. Thank you so much. Appreciate your support and thanks again for having me today. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for listening to the Sports Management Podcast. Please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought about this episode. If you want to get in contact with me, send an email to sportsmpodcast at gmail.com or hit me up on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram at sportsmpodcast.